Okay. So this is a fucking, this is a special day. Hundreds of beavers. It's finally available for the average consumer and not just me with my screener copy that I've watched 10 times approximately. So we're doing a watching watch party and they released the official Hundreds of Beavers uh, <laughs> watch party drinking game. And so I figure that makes sense to do. Because um, fuck it, why not? Um, damn, where the fuck's Blaster Master? You'd think that they would want to be here. I told them yesterday. Anyway, um, you are not obligated to drink. And if you do drink, be responsible. Don't fucking drive after doing this. If you're driving later, don't be doing this drinking game. You can drink water if you really want. So everybody be responsible. Um, yeah. Yeah. Everybody buy the movie. Uh, I understand it's not available in all regions. It should be available uh, on Apple, iTunes, whatever they call it. Uh, U.S., Canada, and Mexico. And then Amazon, at the very least, U.S. But I pinned the link uh, for you to be able to watch the film. You can rent it or buy it. I would suggest buying it because you're probably going to want to watch it more than once. Um, and uh, hold on one second. All right. And so... Yeah, nobody has to participate in the drinking game. If you're able to buy it, buy it. If you're not able to buy it, then try to buy it once it is available to you. Because um, I fucking love this movie. They have no marketing budget. It's super low budget. Um, they've just been doing social media posts, and that's why I've been trying to help out so much is because it's a fucking awesome movie, and I like helping out. Uh, you know, what's the fucking point of having a film review channel if you're not helping uh, promote and pimp out the films that need it? and deserve it um so i prepared a couple drinks here and i got more in the mini fridge if i run out by the way if you do a drinking game it's just a sip when you when it says drink anytime it's not finish an entire drink right so you can just go like drink at your own pace no one's forcing you to drink anything um and again you can do water be responsible please um we're gonna watch kung fu panda 4 later tonight also um one of my drinks is a cider. My roommate had, yeah, don't do shots. My roommate had uh, some Atlanta Hard Cider Co. stuff. And there's cider, there's apple cider in the movie. There's a peach apple cider. So it's an apple cider, and then there's peach in it. There's a, there's apple cider in the movie. So I figure that's a, it's an appropriate thing to be drinking. And then I also got uh, some Canadian Club whiskey and Dr. Pepper Strawberries and Cream, which is fucking addictive and delicious, but like I haven't had in probably six months because if I drink it a lot, I get fat. So be responsible, please. I think this is the first time we've done like a drinking game thing. Um, so I don't want anybody to have a bad time because of it. And again, you, you can just drink water. Please d d don't feel like you have to get shit faced just because things happen in a movie so uh all right i guess uh everybody's ready everybody's ready spaghetti we're good to go um everybody's good i guess we're gonna do it um oh god that light shining through the fucking window all right here we go. Uh, three, two, one. All right. Hype Town. This will help you sync, too, if you're out of sync, my whistling.
I'm just going to reset my mic also because when I do the HDMI things, so it might be a little out of sync again, so I'll start whistling again in a second. There we go. Fisting on horseback in dark. It's just the intro, Blaster Master. I was wondering where you are, but get set up right away. He's drinking a cider. I mean, it's not in the rules, but I, I, I want to drink a cider when he drinks a cider. <laughs> Good dance moves. Fuck your dinner. It's hundreds of beavers time. Just fucking eat while you're watching. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I already have so much of it just like familiarized. Oh, he fell in a hole, so that's a sit. The falling in holes, I guess I won't say anything. Why does my arm hurt? It's sore. What was I doing with my arm? Oh, I was doing some workout stuff. Very nice. <laughs> I like the sound design a lot. <laughs> Drink. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, had they filmed the sharp log thing, that was uh, not actually there. But the black and white really helps things like kind of like blend together. It makes the film's effects feel more consistent with its own universe, even if not every effect is you know, realistic or anything. Hmm. One of his fucking foot paws fell off. Yeah, I wonder how much of this is original score and how much of it is... Because I think in the AMA on the YMS subreddit, um, they mentioned that they licensed some or that there was like a library. But it's all very... Um, <laughs> it's all very consistent, which is nice. Look, the reason why I checked it out is because there was furry shit in the trailer, but it's not the reason why it's a great movie. It just so happens that a lot of movies that have <laughs> furry shit in it are also great. <laughs> <laughs> the reaction is like just long enough to <laughs> figure out what the hell happened there. Hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. The like physical performance and then the combined with the sound design and just the Foley and voice acting is really good. Got a lot of stuffing in his front. <laughs> I, love, I love how often they have to like try to keep their heads on. You can see them like <laughs> holding that shit. Yeah, it is part of the charm. And what's interesting is like, drink. What's interesting is there's a lot of things I love about this movie that are similar to things that I love about some so, get, so bad that it's good movies in the sense where the f filmmaking journey itself is like a part of the story. Um and you can see what people were doing like on a budget and it's the, the filmmaking is like a part of the enjoyment and not just the film itself at face value. Um, but this knows what it is to such an extent that you're not laughing at the film. You're laughing with the film and they consciously decide to keep in things like, you know, one of their feet falls off or like they're <laughs> trying to keep their head on and shit. It's like, it's not pretending to be anything else, which is really nice. Um, so you're never going to see a fucking Sam Raimi <laughs> retrospective attempt at <laughs> George Lucasing the film, you know, like he did with Evil Dead. He's like, oh, I'm so embarrassed about you can see this guy in the background here it's like fuck like the filmmaking itself is a part of the it's a part of the story it's a part of the enjoyment it's crazy that he didn't recognize or realize that just not be aware of what he made like the charm is there hmm. <laughs> i 
I love I love the sounds that they decided are beaver sounds. Like like a like a monster. Like I don't think that's how it's snorting and shit. Shots like this It's in really interesting how they pulled them off, but I guess the the whiteness of the snow helps like hide a lot of you can kind of like key some things out not key things out but like uh just edit some things out like shop some things out it gives it a nice like solid background to have a little bit more room to play with when you're doing effects He just really wants pizza. <laughs> I actually love that shot. Right, like, His eyebrows change a lot during the film, and I don't know why. I should have asked that during the AMA. That's one thing I <laughs> don't have an answer for. <laughs> Hmm. It's just the same sound design choice is repeated. Kind of adds to like the video gamey nature. I've also like that's something that uh was it Wonder Shows in or Drawn Together? It was like in that era. But I've always found that editing choice to be really funny. And that kind of informed a bit of my own editing style. It's not all green screen. This is, they're like really outside in the snow for a lot of this. There's green screen used, but... <laughs> that transition into this song is really well done, too. The music fits the tone in every scene very, very well. There's like a really good understanding of which parts of which songs to use. <laughs> I like how we get like a little explanation for everything, no matter how minor. Nice. Ooh. <laughs> Underwater ice cream. <laughs> Love the puppet. There's a few puppets in this film that are like really awesome looking. Like lots of expression. <laughs> ang, ang, ang. Hmm. No. no, the eyelids do so much. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know how to get them any other way.
He's learning. The puppet is not animated or stop motion. Just someone is controlling it with like hands or sticks and then they key the sticks or hand out. So someone's just controlling a puppet in real time, just like a Jim Henson thing. <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to drink yet, but I'm going to have another soap. Yeah. He's drinking, th like, he's offering cider. I'm drinking cider, okay? <laughs> the music cues. Just perfect. You can do what, like, this movie would not, not be what it is without, like, a keen understanding of uh how to stitch things together in post it's a very very love that <laughs> yeah ooh two channel i think this is my first time watching this with headphones actually yes it knows it knows what sound cues and music cues to use at which points. And and there's a consistency to it. The smoke in the background too. You can like see what he's thinking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the distance too yeah <laughs> those gross sloshing sound effects just kept the fish in his pants Hmm. they should to, to fill up the first half of this movie one of the things should have been like whenever you see cider you know that should be a drink a part of the drinking game <laughs> that face there's something so much more you can get comedically when you're doing the audio and vi video separately for an actor's performance. It's like kind of Kung Pao where you're focused, you're focused on the physical performance in one take and then you're entirely focused on the, the way it sounds in the voice on another take. And then you can just mix and match and find the best of each one too. It's a very uh, useful way of filming things. Yeah, the love theme. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it is it's it's also kind of funny when you consider that they essentially made a silent film but the voice acting does so much so they wrote it like a silent film essentially but it's edited together in a very modern way especially with you know the sound cues and you know the music would be playing and then just abruptly stops when he falls in a hole the choice not to have music there is fucking great just so awkward <laughs> I love how I love how fucking basic this guy's shop is too. Just some planks of wood outside a cabin. Yes. Good sound effect. Yeah, this is very inspired by Chaplin and Buster Keaton and stuff. Physical comedy. <laughs> yeah, making rope. Mmm, it says the letter M, if you didn't catch that. <laughs> Nice. He's so jacked. Look at him. This is the shot. This is the shot where everybody notices how jacked he is. A muscly guy. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> There's so much happening that it really does take several watches to like understand every joke, but they're happening so fast that you don't feel like you're missing out on anything if you don't understand something right away. All my favorite comedies are like r super rewatchable. I've done it. <laughs> Love the sounds. <laughs> I love how that guy just pushed him over. <laughs> They do need to update the drinking game to make it more uh more easy for the first half. You don't want everybody to just be drinking mostly in the second half. Yeah, Icicle Falls, that's not a bad one. I would say whenever you see cider. <laughs> No, he fell in a hole. He fell in it. Two drinks. Three drinks. That's three sips right there. Uh. <laughs> Good, great sound design. I love that. A little clacking sound. Empty pen. <laughs> I love that the flies have little fucking eyeballs, too. Taking up most of their bodies. Like, really great design. And also very consistent with the design of the, like, fursuits <laughs> that they bought. That same grunting sound over and over. Yeah. That also adds to the video gamey nature is like the replayed sound effects. 
It's like you're pressing a button to get the character to do an action. Because it's, it's like very clearly inspired by a lot of other things, but the combination of these has never really been done before. Three hands in one frame. Didn't catch that on my first watch. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was shocked to see A Town Called Panic on that list, which is awesome, because nobody knows about that movie. It's a really great stop-motion French film from 2009. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Pinocchio. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he doesn't know how to shout that loud <laughs> unless he's actually got that through his foot too. Same shot, but love it. It's a great shot. It's worth using twice. Yeah, his eyebrows are not dark black in that shot. I should have asked them that. That's my biggest question. I mean, I don't know if I'll be surprised by the answer, but... <laughs> Of it. That's a great shot, too. It's probably a drone. Drones have changed filmmaking, especially for indie filmmakers. Hmm. Just the little eyeballs on everything. Nice. <laughs> he can't do it without getting that through his foot too <laughs> that posture says so much too when he enters so this one this track is one that kind of like reminded me a little of just the way it started there's like a free play uh like public domain maybe song that a lot of people use but i think that was used like maybe as temp music for this it still works i don't know if it's actually public domain but it's just commonly used and then it transforms into something different, which I like. <laughs> that roll. Another video gamey thing. <laughs> Big zipper. Oh, fuzzy innards. You're right. Drink. Thank you. I'm glad we have that on the screen. Glad I found a way to make it. Hey. <laughs> Got so much blood on him. Yeah, there's only like everything that he can purchase, there's only like one of. <laughs> oh, you're naked. <laughs> oh, I forgot. <laughs> she cute though. 
What's funny is during the AMA, <laughs> one, of, <laughs> one of the tiny things they said, oh, fuzzy innards again. Um, one of the things they said about like getting a movie made, like, look at what resources you have at your disposal. You know, like, do you have a camera? Do you have this? Do you have this? Do you have a hot friend? <laughs> and, and after they said hot friend, I'm like, okay. <laughs> See, these are these these are some good fursuit ideas. <laughs> Nice. Fuzzy innards again. I mean, I thought they were the same, but okay. I'll drink. I'll drink my cider. Hmm. I like that subtle little vignette, if that's what it's called. Where it didn't completely black out the rest of the screen. I thought that was a good choice. Yeah. <laughs> Much like Gaspar Noe's climax, a very particularly late opening credits. Or some people might even think this is the end credits, but no, it's just beginning. During the AMA, they were saying that <laughs> apparently it was very difficult to keep the snowshoes on. <laughs> it's, I mean, 33 minutes through the film, we're basically a third through it. Great music choices here, too. They really understand tone. And it's not just like, oh, everything's ironic. Like they successfully do the more serious tones, which is nice. <laughs> Those dog heads are so fucking ridiculous. They're so blocky, like Minecrafty. The ears, too. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> oh, he fell in a hole. Well, I guess he did fall in a hole. You're right. I've got the Blu-ray for Lake Michigan Monster, so maybe I'll do a watch along later this month or something. Or early next month. I've been meaning to for a while. But I've had my screener copy of this. <laughs> and I... <laughs> I'm excited to see it, but I'm just like, fuck, it's not going to be as good as this. I can just watch this a billion times. You call it BDSM gear. Furries, okay. Harnesses were not initially fetishy. Furries made it that way. <laughs> it's not BDSM gear. <laughs> Come on. I don't think BDSM gear is fucking expensive. I don't think they bought from like a BDSM website. Maybe maybe a friend had some if that's what if you're saying that that's what they use. How much did they say it cost to make? I don't think anybody asked them that during the AMA. 
Yeah, I don't. I'm not. That's not. Is that BDSM? Yeah, that might be. It's definitely a harness of some kind. It's black leather. See, this should be a gif. All right, somebody gif that. Somebody gif that. We need to share this film in the furry community. Every furry should see this, obviously. Perfect furry movie. Love the squirrel puppet. How do they get, how do they make such awesome puppets? Yeah, I think furries have blurred the line between dog harness and BDSM gear is the problem. I think, I think that's an us problem. <laughs> They all got chips. They're playing poker. All right. Wolves attack. Drink. Those are just harnesses, Olivia. <laughs> You're sick. <laughs> I wonder what they put <laughs> in that. Was it just like a huge inflated balloon or something? I feel like it's a balloon. <laughs> it works well, either way. Yeah, I love what they did with the ice, too. I'm curious about these scenes, like, on the ice, too, because they get a lot of width in the frame. So if all of that was green screen, they must have had like a pretty good sized room to do that. They're playing a different game now. They didn't have chips anymore. Wolves attack, drink. A murder is investigated. I mean, if we want to count all these as two drinks. So this, this track right here reminded me of a track from the Holy Mountain, but I don't know if that was used as temp music or not. Mm -hmm. I think they're playing Go Fish now. <laughs> <laughs> or what? It, what is this game called? It's not Go Fish. But the games keep playing based on how many dogs there are left, <laughs> which I think is awesome. <laughs> War? Okay, I've never played that. Wolves attack. We're getting into the drinks here. Pouring the rest of my cider in the cup. I fucking love that this is just flying by. There's nothing. I could watch this movie a billion fucking times. I'm like trying to come to terms with whether or not the inconsistent eyebrows and like maybe tiny, tiny pacing issues near the beginning are like keeping it from being a 10 for me or something. <laughs> and nose plug love the frog pu puppet again so expressive yeah I don't know how they got such fucking awesome puppets I could never make anything like that Yeah, solitaire. <laughs> one dog left still playing cards. I'm going to drink when John Kayak drinks. I don't care. I think that's a good one they should have added. No, they said they got the fursuits from China, not the puppets. Those are definitely not AliExpress puppets.
No, because so, the some of the dark eyebrow ones are like super close up. So I don't think it has to. I ha, I have no idea. I'm confused about it. I'm gonna have to ask. Wolf attack. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Love this shot. The lightning. I was anticipating it, too. I've seen this too many times. I did it, like, literally <laughs> the second it happened. Music works great, too. This song choice, too. Like, it's actually, despite the, like, clearly unserious nature of how things are, like, visually presented in so much of this, it still manages to evoke, like, a real feeling of, like, you know, those wolves in the background, you only see their eyes. Like, it's kind of fucking creepy. And seeing all this like death and devastation, despite being <laughs> in a comedy like this. I love this, love this song. I love how there's essentially two songs happening at once here. This is like the only film where I would say it works. I mean, it's technically one song, I guess, if it's original composition, but I, I don't know. <laughs> the way the cards were spread out. I love looking at the f the footprints and then showing like the head outline. Just these visuals of like what the character might be thinking and the challenge of writing a film in which you're trying to communicate what the character might be thinking without saying words out loud. <laughs> Too complicated. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Those high strings of like fear and tension mixed with like the dramatic lower strings very good choice i wonder if that was two different tracks that they mixed together like maybe they added one first and then decided like oh no we need we need the second emotion here Yeah, the construction sounds are a good addition. <laughs> it's so the the soundtrack is so like atmospheric in like a very like epic kind of way. I don't say that often. <laughs> 
great use of space in the sound there. Like goes into the left channel as he's running by. Love the puppet. <laughs> Again, so many like abrupt music stops, but it helps to like have a keep keep the film sensible in a modern way. That's a really cool shot. Obviously some digital stuff going on there, but that turned out really well. <laughs> it's such a huge mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> the excess yeah because he he spat out blood because he he only knows how to make the wooden crucifixes because he saw the beavers chewing the wood earlier and he traded his knife also that's consistent the only time that he was able to use yeah, nice visual storytelling. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> the sound effects going along with these two. Two channel. It's such a great shot of the swing set, too. I wonder how they did that. I'm trying to think of doing any of this stuff like on a budget. Brave. Go for the comedy. Go for the comedy. Go for the shock. Don't let sensitive people dictate how you're going to fucking make your film. <laughs> yeah. Love how he goes through the motion. You wish this film had a distributor? You know what? If this is successful enough, the creators of this film will uh Love the peaking audio there. They'll appreciate the fact that they own it outright instead of another middleman taking all their money. And if this is, you know, it's it's got cult classic written all over it. It's got longevity to it. I mean, Lake, Get Lake Michigan Monster got a Blu-ray release, so this should. Damn it. Oh, yeah, the poop music. <laughs> hmm. I like how there's exactly three flies on each poop. Again, very video gamey. Oh, tobacco's being used. Drink. Horsey. My people. 
<laughs> Horse representation. <laughs> it's so cold you can see his breath. Da da da. Oh my god. Those beaver tails just gave me like a flashback to a school project in grade two. Maybe one. I think it was grade two. I had the song in my head before it even started. There's great consistency with the song choices and environments. You kind of like learn it as you're watching the film. <laughs> One day later. Is the mic peaking? My mic? I don't know. Is it? Or that mic? The the film's mic peaks several times in this movie. I would argue it adds to the character, though. Fell in a hole. Drink. Like when they found out that Santa guy died... You had to break the news to the <laughs> hot friend's dad. <laughs> His mic peaking was, it was peak. Mmm. Cliff. <laughs> hmm. Murders investigated. Drink. <sighs> the horse costume needs work. What are you talking about? The horse costume is perfect. Don't, don't talk shit about my family. <laughs> That's a really cool shot, too. The beaver had a pipe? Oh, I guess that's tobacco. You're right. I'm drinking. Mmm. Oh, that's so good. You can't afford that. <laughs> I'm going to pee really quickly. They're going to expose funny innards, or f fuzzy innards again, so I'll drink when I'm back. I shouldn't say things. I'm spoiling it.
Do they do fuzzy innards there or no? Yeah, was that right? I'll drink. Mm -hmm. All right. I wonder if that rock was like probably styrofoam. Where do you get like a huge chunk of styrofoam from? They really do a great job making it seem heavy, though. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how they made some of these sounds. Oh, he's learning. Me at the furry convention. All of the music is great, and I'm glad that it's used multiple times in the film for each kind of circumstance. <laughs> A little fart sound effect. <laughs> Piano adds a lot too. Yeah, same music that played last time they were on the ice, too. It's very situational soundtrack. The, <laughs> the foot paws falling off is great. It looks like it's so hard to keep them on. Like, look at the... When they're, like, walking... This tall guy over here, there's such a gap between, like, the legs and the feet. I'm probably wearing, like, the Under Armour underneath. Yes. Hmm. You could see like the tiny little axe on top of the mini character's mouth when he moves in the scene as well. Great choice. <laughs> as a person that was raised in the snow it does suck when you get your fucking tongue or lips stuck to a metal surface for no reason because you're a stupid kid <laughs> You have to like wait for the teacher to like bring like a kettle of boiling water. <laughs> the fucking Edmonton vibes. They have to heat up some water. <laughs> mm. And you'd only do it because someone else would dare you. <laughs> 
It happened to me twice. I didn't learn the first time. Does that count as a wolf attack? I'm gonna drink. I love that backwards hat implying the direction of the character. The Shining. These dogs got dumb noses. <laughs> nice. Love that st stabbing sound effect. <laughs> Piling up the bodies, the three arms. Murder investigation! The icicle's still there, too. Love how he's got them propped up. Love that. The heart locket. Oh, this is great. The black and white helps a lot with that, too. They probably just used milk. But you imagine it is something so much more disgusting. <laughs> I also just noticed... <laughs> That's a funny gag. <laughs> I also just noticed in that shot... There's kind of a interesting advantage that they have recreating the, you know, Buster Keaton Chaplin style with the fast movements, the sped up frame rate. I guess we're seeing some innards. Uh, the frame rate, but... Unlike those films, they still add the modern voiceover, and the voiceover doesn't have to be sped up. So you can still, you know, in that previous shot, he was like, oh, oh. you could like hear him panting, running, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Very wholesome. <laughs> Doing a lot of trick shots <laughs> for a guy who's never gotten it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Struggling. <laughs> uh, that's one of the best parts of the movie. That's one of the funniest for me. It's like finally getting dialogue and it's censored. <laughs> He's got tobacco. He's using it. All right, drink. Ah. <laughs> I I actually genuinely wonder if they must have. They must have recorded the audio clean and then added like peaking afterwards. Like, the peaking is such a, like, intentional, funny part of, of it. There's no way that that was, like, unintentional. I wonder if they set the microphone intentionally to peak or if they added a, an effect in post. I mean, it's definitely intentional. I just wonder if the recording was clean initially. For sure, Boards of Cinema. I've seen it so many times. 
Yes. That's a strong branch. Ice theme, same music. Doi. Very effective, the like hard cut to the dead body. It's like a family guy death. You just remove a couple of the frames that you would normally anticipate. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Third snowshoe for no reason. The goose. <laughs> the beaver sounds are so funny. Just all that fucking fake snow they dropped on them, too. That adds so much to the effect. <laughs> <laughs> I would call that fuzzy innards. I'm going to drink. I might have to get another beverage. There's some close by, so... Synced to the snoring. He's learning. Oh, too soon. Slightly early on that one. It's like Death Stranding. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. When you put enough hours into Death Stranding. <laughs> <laughs> Wolves attack. Where's the madam web watch along? Uh, is it not posted? It's probably posted tomorrow if it's not posted already. Murder investigations. You're right. Thank you. They really get you in the second half of this movie for the drinking game. Wow. <laughs> They're eating a steak of one of them, I don't know if we call that fuzzy innards exposed. One of them's headless. I'm, I'll just drink, I don't care. Just the exaggerated crashing sounds too. Meh, meh, meh. Nice. That's a great shot too. <laughs> Love how it's chomping as it goes. <laughs> what are the odds? Hmm. <laughs> I love how it was a bunny, too. It easily could have been something trying to attack him, but I love how it was just a fucking bunny. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> Again, Mike peeking, adding to the hilarity. <laughs> yes. So satisfying. They're investigating a murder that's taking place, I guess. Nice. Love the pool sound effects. The style is so consistent with itself that you don't even question the placement of characters or objects within the frame. You know, like past the 30 minute mark, especially. Fuzzy innards, okay. I love his persistence. He goes back and he tries things again. <laughs> Wolf attack. Those, those, the shots they use for the background of those are just so good. More drones, but. <laughs> <laughs> Same toilet music. I feel that's kind of like a jury. Hmm. Wild to watch this on psychedelics. I think I could handle this movie on acid. I think I could do it. It's a little morbid, but I'm into it for sure. So. You can actually read his lips in these scenes. He's saying exactly what the title cards say. Yes. Now the real movie starts. <laughs> I love how he caught that frog, too. It was on this watch I just recognized how it got into his inventory. <laughs> so much is going on. You can see the two sets of eyebrows there. <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't notice that on any other watch. <laughs> That's kind of funny, actually. Invest. Yeah, you're right. They're investigating.
Two drinks? Okay. Right. I'll trust you. I mean, this is another one, I guess. I don't know. There's a lot of investigations happening right now. <laughs> I'm going to have to get another Bev. Is this one? <laughs> This is this is another one, I guess. Yes, that zoom is perfect too. Capturing like the the horror. Damn, in the AMA, they said they had, like, what, five beaver suits or something? The way that they were able to utilize all these and... Oh, my God. Just composite each into the shot. So much post. <laughs> Meme reference... Yes. I love how the skunk suit is just like a dude. <laughs> yes. Rube Goldberg. Love that shot. Damn. That shot was so quick, too. I didn't realize how much of it was digital until this watch. I wonder if the previous shot I thought was a drone wasn't actually. It's also complimentary. Yes. That's the meme reference. <laughs> I'm just going to grab a drink from the fridge because I think I'm going to need it. Did the wolves attack? <laughs> the finger snapping. So they made a fake fire behind that to lure him there. So he thought that it was the direction because he based the direction of where he was going towards the uh, shop based on the smoke that he saw in the distance. So that's how they planted their trap. And it took a few watches for me to like fully absorb the clues that they were giving to explain these things. But that's really interesting. <laughs> bam, bam, bam. it's so epic the music really knows how to like build emotionally yeah the time passage as well <laughs> 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 mm -mm. it's crazy how well these shots work knowing that they're only like a few beaver costumes Beaver innards, fuzzy innards.
I remember the heart. You know what you're fighting for. And we also get an expl so they plugged his chimney. So we get an explanation for why there weren't two smokestacks, which is really cool. And it's so quick and you don't notice it when there's so much going at you at once. <laughs> that huge ass tongue. Yeah, the cabin must have been full of <laughs> smoke, you're right, but Somebody needs to show up to a con with that for a suit. Somebody needs to rock that shit. Yo, hundreds of beavers crew, are you selling your fursuits? <laughs> <laughs> I was never considering getting a second fursuit, but if I did, either cool cat or <laughs> hundreds of beavers. Poop music. But it fits well here, even though it's not poop related. It's almost kind of like elevator music stuff. <laughs> What was that up top? That was the first time I noticed that. Was that him? That was really interesting. Notice something new every time I watch this. Love how they imitate the pupils of an eyeball. And again, very video gamey. <laughs> The visual concepts for this are really special. I love how they do this with their fingers before. <laughs> it's the first time I noticed that. There's just too much happening to like catch everything on a single watch. You still have to like process everything you just saw beforehand. Construction vests. And... The JPS on this is off the charts. The jokes per second. Maybe I said, should say GPS gags per second. Well, I'm out of cider, so I can't. Can't drink cider now, but love this. So queer. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's so sexual. It's crazy how much of an addict he still is after seemingly being sober for so long. His other very long arm. Yes. Great zoom. Perfect music. I'm into the emotions. That face. <laughs> mm. 
Yes. That skid sound effect was really good too there. Ah! Damn, someone pointed out that gag in a comment, and that's the first time I actually noticed it. Holy shit. I was like, I had no idea what the fuck they were talking about when they... Uh, him throwing a snowball at himself. That was great. So much happening. Fuzzy innards, I guess? I don't know. You say not really. I'm going to drink anyway. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Pouring myself another one here. Yes. The beauty of so much of this being something created in post is that if something doesn't work out immediately, you can reshoot it much more easily than if you had like a real set. You can kind of just figure out which parts don't work exactly. And then if there's a couple shots you need to recorrect. Yes. Yeah, that's Mario Party. <laughs> Getting some more ice in here. Oops. Shout out to the only movie in history that can do Minion's voice and it'd be funny for me. <laughs> Fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> The horse is wearing a beaver hat. <laughs> I never noticed that before. Woo! I love I love the uh, defeated lawyer character. Crowd guess for each one of these is great. <laughs> Twelve angry beavers. Yeah, there's Jacques. <laughs> Love the French. <laughs> I mean, he's still a murderer. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Right, thumbs up. Nice. Someone must have thrown those papers from under the desk for that timing. That's great. 
it worked really well though. The echo adds so much to the uncomfortable nature of this. The the loose tie too, even. <laughs> 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 I just noticed the guy with the fucking almost kind of like gimp mask or whatever. Yeah. The executioner mask. Those grunting sounds of the beavers are pretty good. I love how he's got the full mitts, too. <laughs> I'm glad they go with this, too. Not a huge fan of the save of the day character showing up at the right time, so I'm glad there was a misdirect. The coat! <laughs> I feel like that scream was repurposed from another one, but I don't mind. It's Sharpie. <laughs> Great Sharpie SFX. I mean, a lot of the screams were very clearly repurposed, obviously. That one, not as uh, clear, but if it is, even. Great zoom there, too. Solid understanding of meme culture. It's great to see modern movies from people who understand culture. <laughs> that was the first time I noticed one of them saying, oh, snap. Holy shit. Watching with this 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 with headphones for the first time. Never heard that before. Yes. I was going to mention earlier, but I didn't want to spoil anything. The the kind of chaotic, quick cut nature to the initial fight scene with the wolf attack with Santa. It was a. Uh, it didn't reveal its cards too early, whereas this fight scene is just so much more competently shot. It has such a great satisfying buildup of what they're capable of filmmaking wise <laughs> that's a cool shot too yeah <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> it's it's great to watch a film that just gets better as it goes to him. <laughs> Cigarette, tobacco, drink. Fuzzy innards drink. Yes. <laughs> I love when they surrender. It's it it works so well for the comedy for <laughs> for like there's so many like even even horror movies that try to be serious there's this trend of like oh every only the characters that deserve it die you know like fucking no main character dies or like if there's a main character they just like act like a piece of shit the whole movie and then die and it's like no you want whether you're going for shock or horror or comedy, you want somebody to feel something. You want somebody to die that like probably doesn't deserve it. <laughs> right. Otherwise, what are you doing? You're, it's just boring. Yes. I love the glasses and the reflection too. <laughs> Satisfying. <laughs> Those slow turns in the background, too, are a nice touch. Yes. That crowd noise was a nice touch, too. That was a clean line for a P. Duh. <laughs> it happens twice in the movie, once with the uh bear trap thing. <laughs> Those are nice parts. <laughs> the jump kick. <laughs> 
Just fucking massacring them. I saw funny fuzzy is it pff, funny izards fuzzy innards. I wish I was wearing my Hundreds of Beavers t-shirt, but I think I left that in Vancouver. But I saw this at Fantasia, so, for the first time. Great track. See, I wonder, like, that's that's a silly gag. I wonder how they filmed that. Because I couldn't tell if that was, like, composite or not. With him just, like, going forward fast. Like, that. The black and white, the film grain. Those are funny, fuzzy innards. When the shots are quick enough, yes. <laughs> when the shots are quick enough you can get away with <laughs> you can get <laughs> away with a few different things because like that was that was clearly a real shot right was it yeah this is a real shot and then that's fun like that they're going faster. How did that happen? Did the cameraman slow down for sale sign? Or maybe it was done like stop motion style. Huh. If it was, it was really well done. Well, I mean, speeding up in post, the cameraman, if they were following them at a consistent speed, the camera would also go faster. That's why I'm confused about it. Yes. Yes. No. Nuclear explosion. Oh. That should be a that should be a finisher drink. The nuclear explosion. That wasn't nuclear? What the fuck do you mean it wasn't nuclear? When else was there a nuclear explosion? The movie's over. That's clearly what they meant.
Thank you, Olivia. Yeah, you could really watch this movie like fucking 20 times and not get bored of it. I literally like in the ending climax, like I, I get like kind of emotional just the way it's all put together, like the music and everything and like the build up. Yeah, you know, I've been thinking about this for a bit. We're giving it a 10. If I can give Climax a 10, I can give this a 10. If I've seen this movie fucking 10 times in less than a year, I think I should give it a 10. A 10 doesn't mean necessarily there's no flaws to it whatsoever, but like this is this is one of those films where any flaws are still a part of the charm. I don't I don't remember the last time that a movie has come out that I've like actually seen it this many times within this kind of a time period. I think the last one was like Death Proof. And that's because I was just trying to, or sorry, Grindhouse, because I was trying to see it as many times in theaters before it wasn't even a thing anymore. And that was like 20 years ago. Um, yeah. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Dass, you fucking piece of shit. What is wrong with you? <laughs> My God. My God, Das. What are you talking about? You are a, you are an incomprehensible monster, and you always have been. Oh, wasn't not laughing. I thought you <laughs> I read I read it. <laughs> I read it. <laughs> I think you understand how I read it. I was like, what the fuck is your problem? <laughs> Why would you say that? That's funny. That was fun. Um, would I put this above May, December, or Zono? Yeah, I mean... Well, here's a part of my problem is apparently this came out 2022. So it might not even be on my 2023 list. It might be on my 2022 list. And since I do my list so late, then, you know. Why wouldn't I put it? Like, apparently its first screening was in 2022. Fantastic Fest, which I've never gone to, but I've heard is great. But I keep missing because it happens between TIFF and VIF. And I would just not have any time to like record my reviews for either of those other festivals if I went to that. So I have not rewatched Zone of Interest. Obviously, I have to like wait for the right mood to do that. I can't just I can't just pop that on whenever like this film. Yeah, this is a ten. Gets a ten. It would be crazy not to give this a 10. When I'm still, like, noticing things every watch. IMDb Trivia says the film's estimated budget was around $150,000, but... I don't know where that's sourced from, so I can't verify that. Although, I mean, I could verify it because I can just message the creators. But It's a combination of extreme limitation, but extreme understanding of how to use the limitation to their advantage 
and then also extreme effort, especially in post. Like my fucking music video was like a nightmare to edit. That required some shit. This is way, <laughs> way more complicated than that. Um, yeah. This is special. It's going to remain special. It's not a film that will be forgotten. It, uh... Yeah. Modern classic is the way to put it. I just don't know how they top that. <laughs> I would feel a lot of pressure if I were them. Because this is just fucking so brilliant. And they've said that they don't want to make a sequel, which I wouldn't mind a sequel. <laughs> I don't think anybody would mind a sequel, but I respect that decision. You shouldn't force something like that, obviously. Um, but I'm like, what the fuck are they going to do now? It'll be interesting to see what they make, hopefully with a bigger budget, but. So this film doesn't have a thousand ratings on IMDb yet, but I'm trying to compare it. There's a, a bunch of other shit that has like barely any ratings. So this is doing like pretty well for itself for being like an extremely uh, indie, self-produced, self-distributed feature. Well, I mean, they had producers, but. The drinking game was fun. I definitely did add to the drinking game. Um which seemed like the correct thing to do for me anyway. But Is Hundreds of Beavers the first film you've raised from an 8 to a 10? No, uh, Anomalisa for sure. Is that's an easy one to remember. Um... All right, so if you enjoyed this film, and let's say you weren't in the United States of America or Canada or Mexico, and you weren't able to purchase it, keep an eye out for it because they are trying to distribute it in other markets, and uh, try your best to purchase the film if you are not able to. Um, same ending song? Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. That was from the... Um, that's another meme. <laughs> that's great. Have you seen the clip that that's from, actually? Literally, the, the guy just fucking explodes at the end of the movie in the credits play. Yeah, that's a funny one. So, yeah, great understanding of meme culture... And just the types of pacing and uh, sensible choices that make that make sense. I guess I'm kind of repeating myself in my sentence there, but it's a uh, very well thought out, uh, very well executed. Um, we should get we should get more channels to cover this because you know what fucking sucks you know what fucking sucks these uh I was pimping this out for like a while before this point because obviously it's you know like a small film that I love um and they need the help and I told them like oh yeah I'm like connected with a bunch of these uh uh online film critics or whatever. And so they gave me permission to send the screener link to whoever I wanted as long as they're like a person that covers film, films on the internet. And so I sent it to like fucking a dozen different people. 
nobody n either nobody watched it like I, I i guess they didn't watch it because like of course they would make a video if they watched it but it's kind of like damn did my peers not trust me are these people only like friends with me for cloud or something like i don't know it kind of like that, that was like a sad realization um shay frill is it was all already on their radar uh before i sent it to them um because they really liked the uh, Lake Michigan monster monster. So Schaeferlis didn't let me down. In fact, they were ahead of the curve. Uh, ahead of the curve or ahead of the, I don't remember the expression. Um, but a bunch of other people kind of fucking disappointed me on that one. It was kind of sad. Free movie, free screener for like a film that's like fucking awesome that now that everybody else is going to be talking about it, they're going to be like, ooh, oops, I should have been on this earlier and then should have trusted me, but eh, whatever. Um, so Schaeferl has made a video, hun f sorry, Hundreds of Beavers, funniest film of the decade so far. It's 2024. Can I think of a funnier film? I don't think I can. Black Dynamite was definitely the funniest film of the 2000s. What was the funniest film of the 2010s? Maybe they only cover things that appeal to mass demographics, I guess. I mean, yeah, that's the unfortunate reality. You know, you send somebody... I'm one of few fucking major film review channels on the fucking internet, which sucks, and I wish there were more, that is actually willing to, like, promote smaller films or, like, give them a chance or, like, what? I don't know. Some of these other people are just... They don't make videos that they don't think are going to get views, I guess. But now now that it, it'll, you'll probably see some, and I'm not going to name names, but uh, you'll probably see some from more YouTubers now that it's getting a digital release and now that other people are covering it. Um, so we're going to watch Kung Fu Panda 4 in a bit. Anyway, yeah, 10 out of 10. Birdman for 2010s? Birdman funniest film? Birdman's funny. It, like, it's... A con Birdman's... A great film that's also a comedy. I don't know if Birdman would be the funniest film of the 2010s. Death of Dick, no Dick Long was funnier than Birdman for me. Um, but I don't know if even that would be. Maybe I would give it. Maybe I would give the 2010s to like a Neil Breen film like Fateful Findings. That was 2013, right? So I'm going to see if Cat BF is uh, close to finished making food. Um, Death of Dick Long is a special film. It's fucking great. Did I do a watch along for that? I don't think so. I'm glad that Shay Frillis has like such a huge audience and is able to Yeah, six hours ago, ninety one thousand views, that's great. Glad it's glad it's helping them out. People don't understand the importance of, like, helping smaller films. Because so many people, like, half of the fucking channels on YouTube right now are just people complaining, like, movies are bad now. But you're not watching the right movies. <laughs> you, 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 the, the movies are good. You gotta, you, you gotta find the right movies. It's easier to make it, the, the, the barriers 
for entry are lower than they ever have been in history towards making a film and then getting your film seen by an audience. There's tons of fucking great movies. Anyway, um, I'm going to pee. I'm going to change the stream title, I guess, and then see if Cat BF is ready to watch uh, Kentucky Fried Panda 4. So uh, I'll be back in a bit. I don't know how long. I don't know, 10 minutes or something. I don't know. BRB.